Hey, this is Michael Pavlovich, senior artist at Sony Online Entertainment, and I'm back to give you a detailed look at the awesome new ZBrush 4. Uh, we're going to start out with just the basics, such as the file menu, which contains ZBrush's new filing system, Z Projects. We're also going to look at a number of things that have changed since the last ZBrush, um, such as the new keyboard shortcuts and setup hotkeys, as well as the new shortcuts for the new masking and selection system within ZBrush, and how to use these new options to really help speed up your workflow. We'll then go on to talk about the new brushes in ZBrush and, of course, the settings for those new brushes, such as the new Move Brushes and their settings, uh, the new Deco Brush, the new Rope Brush, and the new Clay Buildup Brush. Um, last but not least, we'll check out the new Matchmaker Brush, which is used to um, match subtools to the underlying geometry, as well as a detailed look at the new Hard Edge Modeling Ace within ZBrush for the Clipping Brush and all the different ways you can use this clipping brush um, to your advantage for both hard edge modeling and base mesh modification. We'll also talk about the new subtool uh, menu options, including the new subtool menu selection, merge, duplicate, append, uh, insert, and project all, as well as solo, and the new expose, all within the new ZBrush 4. Next, we'll talk about Shadowbox Fundamentals. This will include a detailed look at Shadowbox, how it works, um, Shadowbox base mesh creation tips, Shadowbox common practices such as working together with new clip brush and other useful hard edge brushes such as trim and polish to get the object you want out of Shadowbox as fast as possible. Um, it'll also include a how-to of importing textures to use a Shadowbox image planes. We'll take a look at layer updates um, such as recording, layer editing, using layers to contain a combination of poly paints only, poly paints with deformation information, and even poly paints with sculpt and mask information. We'll go over the new timeline and its functions, including setting timeline keys, um, editing tracks, um, the timeline track itself, including setting keys for cameras, color, materials, wireframes, and much more. We'll also go over movie options to get um, the best quality movie you can out of ZBrush, um, also with, in conjunction with uh, BPR. We'll take a very detailed look um, at all the options in the new Spotlight tool, um, including an in-depth look at the Spotlight as a texturing tool, sculpting tool, and even an image plane reference in conjunction with a uh, timeline for modeling as well. We'll also go back over retopologizing in ZBrush. Um, including two retope methods. Um, the first one being rigging method we went over in the previous DVDs, and also a new retopology method using a append, and I'll demonstrate all the pros and cons of using one over the other. We'll quickly touch on transpose updates as well, such as the new transpose units and the new contact function in ZBrush 4. We'll also go over in detail um, how, do you, how do you UV your objects in ZBrush using UV Master, and even how you can use the UV Master flatten ability to polypaint um, on your flattened object within ZBrush and maintain that texture information to apply it back to your sculpt. We'll then go over how to bake maps within ZBrush. Um, first we'll use manual methods to create a diffuse map, a normal map, and a displacement map. Um, and then we'll go on to use the awesome multi-map exporter. Um, and this will help you get your textures out of ZBrush and into a rendering package of your choice. Speaking of rendering, um, we're also going to take a very detailed look at the new materials and um, rendering options within ZBrush 4. The first thing we're going to do is start out with the new modifiers um, for each shader um, and each shader channel, um, including the new overlay nodes, as well as the incredible new shader mixer, which contains all of the subsurface scattering, Fresnel, and blend mode options within ZBrush 4. We're going to use these uh, new material settings in conjunction with ZBrush 4's new BPR, or Best Preview Render, um, and this is going to give us the ability to completely control shadow, ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, transparency, uh, and much more, all with um, great anti-aliasing control. Um, and you can use these in both your still images and even your high-quality animation renders. We'll also go over multi-pass rendering, which is a powerful resource for compositing images. Um, there's a ton more things we're also going to go over as well, but I don't want to sit here talking about it all day. I want to actually go and do it. So let's get in there and start learning all about ZBrush 4. 